Most classic arcade game characters, while memorable and iconic, didn't have much in the way of, well, character. They were simply vessels through which players conquered the quarter-munching challenges facing them, and if they had any personality or backstory at all, it was likely explained solely through brief splash screens rather than an actual narrative. But sometimes a company like Capcom decides to revisit their old IPs and characters and breathe new life into them. Enter Cody Travers, the brawlic protagonist of 1989's Final Fight, who over the years has gone from two-dimensional battle boy to a complex, nuanced character. Final Fight's story was a classic damsel in distress narrative. After Jessica, Cody's girlfriend and daughter to the mayor of Metro City, is kidnapped by the vicious Mad Gear Gang. Cody teams up with his friends Guy and Mayor Hager himself to save his sweetheart and free the city from the criminal scourge. Despite the game's bare-bones plot, the first nugget of Cody's character development is evident in its ending cutscene. After defeating Mad Gear's leader, wealthy crime boss Belger, Cody pieces out immediately without saying a word to Jessica first. When she catches up and confronts him, he tells her that he just can't stand by and watch while evil still stalks the streets, before leaving for parts unknown. Where are you going? How can you just walk away now? I want to stay here with you, Jessica, but I can't. Not while evil still stalks the street. Oh, Cody. This was the first hint at what motivates Cody above all else an insatiable desire for fighting, violence, and justice that not even he fully understands. While he sat out the two direct sequels to Final Fight, Cody would eventually return in the spin-off fighting game Final Fight Revenge. Set several years after the original game, Revenge had Cody return to Metro City after some time spent fighting crime abroad. Though he sought to prevent the Mad Gear Gang from reforming, he would tragically never get the chance. The game ended with his arrest by corrupt cop Eddie E, his years of street fighting and vigilante justice finally catching up with him. Cody would remain in prison until the final fight in Street Fighter universes were officially merged in the Street Fighter Alpha series of games. I thought I was fighting for peace in this city. Look where it got me. The drag, man. Now sporting a shaggy do and some classic jailbird stripes, the tragic anti-hero slipped away during a prison riot and reunited with Guy. His former friend grilled him for the violent turn his life has taken, with Cody responding that violence was all he lived for and his prior heroics just provided an excuse for him to get his fill of fighting. After a brief scuffle, the two parted ways once again, with Guy asserting that deep down, Cody is a good person. He just needs someone to point his violent impulses in the right direction. That would pretty much take care of the problem. But now, look at me. I gotta deal with the city council, public hearings, contract bids, lobbying. And the villains are now hiding like shadows behind a system that protects them. I can't clean up this city by simply beating them up. This wish would be granted come Street Fighter V, in which Hager exonerated Cody for his crimes in exchange for him succeeding Hager as mayor of Metro City. Though initially hesitant, Cody eventually accepted cleaning up his act in order to fight crime in a more proactive and more importantly, legal way. He's still not above whipping out his trusty knife or lead pipe to personally lay a smackdown on wayward criminals. However, proving that despite all he's been through, some street dogs just can't be broken. Punishment by fist. Not a bad policy, ain't it?